Hi, I'm Cynthia Schiller. Please like and subscribe where we help and heal one day at a time. Um, I'm going to kind of follow up to some of the uh, videos that I have done. Um, my two most popular, and it's kind of interesting, uh, like kind of the severity and the difference. Um, my two most popular are a peek inside uh, the new supply and their relationship that isn't pretty. And the other one is, um, is a narcissist. Uh, do they really have an empty soul? Um, so based on the analytics, I can kind of see where you guys are at. And um, I just want to say a couple things on it. Uh, I hope you watch those videos. Um, but I can see where the pain is coming from. Um, a lot of us are uh, trying to figure out, um, you know, are, are they really happier? Um, and it's not that we are searching that information to, to know if they're happier. We're searching that information to understand how they could just leave us, how they could just instantly turn their feelings off. Um, the other one is like, do they really have an empty soul? Again, that goes to um, the emptiness, the lack of empathy. Like, is this real? Like, what is so different about these people um, that it's caused so much pain in us? Um, and we're all searching for answers. And I give you guys kudos for doing that because through knowledge, you are gonna heal a lot quicker. So um, if, if you wanna watch several videos from whoever, myself or other people, um, read some books, uh, search the internet, sometimes just the answers. Um, I would like you to watch my brain damage ones, um, whether it's ourselves or the narc, um, cause that'll give us some insight on what really is going on. And um, a lot of us want to heal. And, um, you know, there's uh, differences in relationships and how we handle them. Um, and they get really tricky. Um, as a society, we've kind of trained um, in the traditional sense, um, whether it's male or the male dominant type, uh, where you relate to the male dominant type, um, where they're supposed to be the hunters we're as females or um the feminine side of the relationship we're supposed to accept that we need to be chased because they like the the thrill of the chase um and uh we kind of train ourselves as a society not to have a balanced relationship um you know that we shouldn't be overly emotional don't share too much um and uh, even the narcissists that are self-aware tell you don't share too much information. We will use it against you. Um, but it gets confusing uh, when we're caught up in these relationships and it's like a safe zone for us. This is a person we're building our life with. And um, as you try to find these answers, um, uh, you need to look at their brain chemistry. You need to look at their past. You need to look at their patterns, um, their commitments to changing, um, you know, because sometimes uh, it starts messing with our minds. We start feeling that we did something wrong and we're exhausting ourselves. You're just coming out of an exhausting relationship as it is. Um, you know, you wonder, will I ever heal from this? Is the pain ever going to go away? Um, and it is like a death. Uh, a death of a relationship you're or a, you know just like a death of a relationship compared to a death of somebody you really love um but i did a video on, on how narcissists view death and it's way different than we view it um they can be sad they lost their supply usually uh, they're the types that are able to move on uh quickly whether it's a loss of a family member um or a spouse, uh, things like that, they're able to just, it's like they flip a switch. Um, so even if they were kind of in a height uh, of the relationship, they're able to get it over it fairly quickly and just move on. Um, and it's hard to understand how somebody can do that. Uh, when we're sitting here ruminating, sometimes for years, decades, um, what is going on? What did we do wrong? Can we fix it? Like we had something so perfect because they showed us something what, that was so perfect. And then to sit there and try and figure out like, how was that a facade? How was that a facade? It felt so good, seemed so perfect. They were able to put this effort in. Uh, uh, super willingly um but that's uh when when they scramble they 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 need to um lock in their supply and um there's nothing that we really did wrong uh except we got comfortable like this is perfect you know uh just like if you buy the the, the dream home uh that you've always wanted 
it's time to move in and settle in and live life and enjoy it. You've got your dream. And that's the same with the relationship where we built it. Let's move into it. Um, but they're so easy to like pick apart little things and complain about things that are going on in the relationship uh, to take offense to things. Um, so do they have an empty soul? I talked uh, in some of my videos how um, a part of their brain is, is thinner than it should be, which leaves room for um, like an emptiness uh, and they can't fill it with the brain material that they need to process empathy. Without empathy, you don't have a connection. Without a connection, you don't really form deep bonds. Um, there's ways that you can develop a, a deeper bond through physical touch, um, things like that. But just like right now, if you guys gave me a hug, um, you'd be like, that was really nice. This, this lady gave me a hug and, and she cared about me. Um, but you're not in love with me. You're, you're not going to fall in love with me just because of the, the hug. Even if I gave you a hug every day at work and, and before you went home, um, they don't have uh, the brain chemistry that is going on uh, to, call, to, to um, allow the uh, love to solidify, to allow the love to have value to them. Um, because uh, when we're going through falling in love, um, I mentioned that it's like being addicted to cocaine. Uh, the brain chemicals that are released are just like that. Um, so it's something that we kind of value. Like love should be healthy. Uh, drugs and being addicted to things aren't. But it's kind of like, you know, um, why not be addicted to what you're involved in? Why not be addicted to like, we are so lucky and let's just enjoy it because, you know, um, but there are times, you know, we got to uh, give and take, you know, maybe they need a break. Maybe they're not feeling good. So they need to relax. Um, the difference between us and them is we realize, you know, how special what we have is. And if they need to take a break because uh, they're sick, um, you know, so it's kind of in a sense, somewhat taking yourself out of the activity of the relationship because you need to heal. We're offering to help them. We'll spend time with them. We'll give them space if they're coughing and sweaty and just want time to feel better. Um, so we're working around all these things. But in their mind, um, they need to process all that stuff that's going on inside their head. They need to, to uh, calm it down. And if we're not available for them, uh, they have a resentment uh, towards us because of what they're feeling, because we were what they secured as their scapegoat from their pain. Uh, that's why they secured us. We're in a sense like a drug to them, um, but they're not getting the high that they need um, anymore. They did in the beginning because they were securing, they did the, uh, the chasing and um, I know it's it's hard to comprehend and that's why we hurt that they can just turn things off. Um, like we are searching what is up with this new supply? What and we're doing that not to be like, oh, that's so great. Like, oh, I bet she's beautiful or he's handsome or oh, I'm so happy. You know, I wish I could have given him that. No, we're we're trying to process. Let's be real. We're trying to process what caused us all to fall apart what were the mistakes were there really mistakes was it my fault um and like how people say that they're evil maybe uh demonically possessed um you know uh, and and the confusion that we go through because we see you know everybody else is adoring them um we adored them we see that they know how to handle the perfect relationship and then it all just goes uh to pot it just falls apart like, where did the value like leave? Because it is still possible. Um, but sometimes uh, it's just easier to move on. Uh, sometimes the whole cheaper to keeper um, kind of goes through their mind. Like, you know, I like the status I have and I'm not giving it up. Also, they don't want us to win um, to where it's like, no, she's she, screw it. I'll just cheat on him or her. Uh, they're going to be stuck with me. They're going to, you know take care of the kids so I can still see the kids. They're going to do this. They're going to do that. It's all about what they want. 
they're not going to be like you know what i'm really hurting this person um maybe we should split they'll be like no i'm either going to latch on or i'm going to put you through hell or i'm uh going to try to get out of child support or i'm going to take the kids uh you know um and and it's hard like do they want the kids do they not want the kids um and i went through four custody battles four the average uh couple that's married uh he canceled the wedding three weeks before we got married so we were never even married um but five to six percent of marriages um go to custody it's usually one custody battle i went through four over a guy who threatened to kill me if i didn't abort her he said this is god coming down on him um and just like it just it all turned on to him and uh you know he also we broke up when i was like seven months pregnant and we got back together but he had told me that he did not want to be with um a woman with a child and what did he do he dated a woman with uh, maybe it was four years old i don't remember but you can date somebody with a kid but you broke up with me because you don't want a woman with a kid and this is your kid like just the confusions that go on the justifications that they tell us um are really really odd and um you know uh they do have really fragile egos and sometimes it's kind of like do they really like the vulnerable ones you can see that but the grandiose ones you're like are you kidding me they, like they're on top of the world they're on top of their company or the social group or they walk into a bar and everybody knows them um and uh you know depending on their outbursts uh sometimes they're still adored sometimes uh some of them are like really angry and feared sometimes people will be nice to them uh out of fear but it seems like they're adored um some people are on to who these narcissists are others are still fooled um because they are master manipulators and as far as what's inside them it it's it is an emptiness there's a portion of their brain that has shrunk and it's not all there and does that go into the soul the the mind and the soul um so there's all these different religious ways to look at things um but there is an emptiness uh yeah they do have an um empty like I, I i said in another video like my dog picks up on my emotions my dog has come up and and kind of hugged me or she'll snuggle with me um my dog picks up on things that a narcissist uh discards they're like i don't want to deal with it or wait what you had a bad day yesterday about what like they can't comprehend it uh or if we ask something we explain it um there, there's a disconnect uh, between the heart and the mind um so they're so caught up in their mind that they don't get into the the heart of things they they didn't drop down to the heart they stayed in in the brain damaged area um and and it's like the connection is not there that little pathway to the heart um so you know we we wonder about these new supplies and we're kind of heartbroken like you can just move on or not even think about it or try to um see that i'm hurting and maybe just i don't know just talk to me or you know we we can't even talk if we pass each other at the grocery store like a casual hello or how's your day going or the kids doing okay um it turns into like a hatred and i've always had a hard time with that um they always say you can't love some or you can't hate someone if you didn't love them for me that would be true for them um i i am starting to rethink that as far as how narcissists are can they just peer out hate um you know did they really love us uh because the coldness um like if i don't even know if i'd really hate somebody i would be hurt by them i don't even think i would hate them because of what i've been through with these narcissists i don't hate them i'm so mad at them though i am so mad so hurt uh so devastated my whole life turned upside down without like a second look back from them
Um, and then abuse on top of it afterwards. Um, it's like, okay, things ended, but you're still abusing me afterwards. Um, it takes a while for things to settle out. Things will get better. Um, the more you remove yourself, the more healing you will have. Um, and looking at what this new supply is, um, a peek inside. And um, I mentioned, look across all these channels. Each and every one of us has been a new supply. That will give you your answer on what's going to happen. Um, the timeline is going to vary, but the deeper they are, the more likely it is to fall apart. So when you're living with someone or married to someone, that's when things fall apart the most. Uh, if you look at their friendships, which ones um, lasted? Uh, were, were there close buddies? Um, and it all depends too, just like uh, going to see someone. Uh, you can put on your, you, you know, your Sunday best, your fake smile, uh, do everything and uh, enjoy it. It was nice food and there's people to talk to and you know, it was raining outside, might as well go hang out with the girls at a baby shower or whatever. Um, so you don't normally argue during those things. So narcissists make it through life on those kind of um, uh, level of depth in the activity. It's like something to do. Uh, they enjoy it. You know, they might enjoy going to a concert as opposed to a baby shower. So there's different levels of enjoyment. Um, but the connection is not there. So when you're thinking about the new supply, um, they're just getting love bombed. They're getting tricked. And eventually that will change. It guaranteed will change. Will the relationship last? Uh, you know, um, it, it, it could, but it's like a life sentence. You know, um, do you really want to, you know, move in with me if I was going to be rude to you all the time? You have a free place to stay. Come move in. I'm going to treat you like crap. Some people need that. They, they need that free place to stay or, you know, they're too scared or they don't have a vehicle or, you know, uh, religious beliefs. I made, I made this commitment. I can't leave. Um, so sometimes it will last, um, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be happy. And I don't know how you can be happy because human nature um for and, and there's always variations but um usually we go through life with friends and we usually have a, a, at least like some people do more than one is what i'm trying to say but most of us will uh commit to one person um and have a committed relationship some of you might do the polyamorous or whatever but uh usually um we get a connection with somebody extra special to us. Um, and in a sense, we're recreating um, the, the safety of, of what we should have had in, in our childhood. Um, so most of us have grown up uh, in decent families. Um, every family has issues. Um, if you didn't have the best situation, at least you're coping with it, uh, growing from it because you didn't have the five out of nine traits of a narcissist that um, you had enough brain capacity to move forward correctly. Um, but that narcissist is always going to be empty inside. They're not going to have that connection. So they're going through life um, with, uh, you know, uh, acquaintance like uh, depths in their relationships. Um, they latch on to, to show off um, or to just have, cling on to somebody. I, I need supply there. Um, so they will lure us back in. They will hoover. Um, that's why we don't get the closure um, because, you know, just like I'm kind of a close hoarder, <laughs> I need to, I want to move. So I need to throw out a lot of my old clothes. Um, that's kind of hard. Like, I don't know, maybe in 74 years, I might need that sweater. Um, I'm probably never even going to take it off the shelf, you know, and it is time to discard it. Um, and when I move, I will. I'm in the process of doing that. But for the narcissist, is that's we are their security. They don't know if they're ever going to need to pull us off the shelf. So they're not willing to fully discard us. Um, it feels like it. 
because they won't talk to us. Um, but they're tricky. They know how caught up. They know we got addicted because of our actions, um, because of the depth of how much we tried. So they know all they got to do is snap their fingers. And it's messed up because we've trained society that the man usually or the more dominant one is going to be the one that chases and um, the one that cares the most is the one that loses the most and they don't care uh, to a deep level so they don't feel like they lost anything they just moved on you know um, they get irritated if we cry you know and uh, you know uh, I'm in a head I was in a heterosexual relationship so he's with another woman um, she's probably going to cry, whether it's hormones or frustrations or, you know, guys cry too, but, um, you know, she's going to talk about something, probably get emotional just because a lot of women do, men do too, but um, it's going to irritate him. You know, it's not going to be perfect anymore. Like, what is going on? Uh, emotions, uh, they don't like them. Uh, and they thrive on anger sometimes they thrive on getting a kick out of negative emotions but positive emotions unless we're stroking their ego um throws them off uh if we get more attention than they do it throws them off um that's why it's weird in your um normal uh i don't need to mean to use the word normal but your uh standard uh, traditional male female um a lot of men feel threatened when the woman uh, makes more money. A lot of men don't like that um, because it's shown uh, who's the one in power. And a lot of them, um, you know, they can reap the benefits of it. They can reap the benefits. If I made eight times more, like they could reap quite a bit of benefit from that. But they might discard even thinking about dating me because uh, for one that, you know, they don't think they're worthy of achieving something like that, or um, it's threatening where they have to tell, you know, their friends, you know, uh, who made more money, or it's just kind of mind blowing on what's important to the narcissist. Um, the new supply uh, will go through normal things in life. And by doing that, um, it's going to cause problems in the relationship, whether they have to go out of town to work, that's going to take away from the supply that the narcissist needs because, um, they cannot take downtime when they have, um, at rest. That's why I did a, a drinking video and also was a brain damage one. I'm not sure, but, um, when they're at rest, um, their brain starts to get really uncomfortable. Uh, they're, uh, uh, secreting more uh, hormones that are causing them to kind of not necessarily panic, but uh, need to have fuel. Um, so they get angry or they pick a fight or they cut us down. Um, and just look across the board, all these people, just how crazy the situations were. Uh, they're going to gaslight the new supply. Just, you know, so even if they seem happier, um, remember how long it took us to figure out what is going on. We go through it and, and we can feel something is off. Um, it's hard to say somebody is narcissistic. I've been taught not to bully, not to call names. Um, so I don't want to label somebody as a narcissist if they're not, that's not fair to do. I'll do a video on the, uh, nine traits of a narcissist probably tomorrow. Um, and there's five that they have to get to be narcissistic um, uh, with NPD. But you can only get the disorder if it's affected your life. Otherwise, they won't give you that diagnosis. Um, there is no medication for it. Um, it's, you know, a lot of psychotherapy. Uh, and the success rate is not very high because they have that inner child mentality. So it's like, um, you know, asking a five-year-old or six-year-old to go to counseling and talk about adult things and how would an adult handle it and how would you relate to this ad adult person? 
um they might you know if you take a regular six-year-old okay i have to share i understand why i have to share but that's that's different than being at an emotional level with somebody um seeking out uh what their partner is trying to communicate you know why do they have a sad face do we just walk past it uh you know um it's just uh something i found interesting on uh, how many more of those videos that you guys are watching so i want you guys to heal um i want you guys to take some time uh to focus on yourself focus on your friendships they took away so much from you they took away you know your ability to ability to ex excel at work um you made it through you're working uh, but excel at, at whatever it is you're doing um take the time for your friends uh, when you do talk to your friends um you know try not to ruminate talk about the x try to focus on something else if that's too hard uh to just not chit chat about the exes and their relationships um do an activity where you don't necessarily go kayaking uh where you, you talk a little bit but they're not the deep uh conversations or go swimming or um go to a movie things like that where it's not necessarily like talking talking um and maybe have coffee afterwards for a little bit uh just kind of ease back into it uh take back your life um do a new hobby or get back into what you used to love whatever it is um take time for yourself if you need a nap it's okay to take a nap if you need to cry it's okay to cry um but try to move forward every day and build yourself uh take that shower um i've noticed you know uh sometimes you you just want to like not really care just kind of sit on the couch or not change your clothes or take your showers take take care of yourself eat healthy uh enjoy making a meal for yourself pamper yourself a little bit um and just know that uh you know it, it's hard looking at the new supply i get it and it's hard not understanding uh, about the narcissist like what what kind of soul would be so cold um what really did go on why is it so different from you know the love bombing stage to the discard without without tears from them if they do have tears like look back uh one one of my i don't know teared up but like how much do they really cry I don't know can you guys comment on that um how much did they really cry uh when when you guys were together um because like i said i was also in a heterosexual one uh, women tend to cry more but men do cry um and sometimes you know there are those crocodile tears uh they're manipulators but um sometimes you can tell if they're real if that makes any sense because um, mine uh one time is his eyes welled up and i think it was just not wanting to lose the supply you know because you didn't get that but i love you or can't we work it out or it was just kind of like what's going on you know like a surprise so big hugs i'll see you in the next video